Hello YouTube, Bill Hensley here and welcome to my one month review of the Chevrolet Bolt EV. I've been itching to put together a review of the vehicle for some time now because what I have here is a base model Bolt EV, an LT, not the Premier. However, being a base model that it is, it is still tricked out with everything that an LT can get. Much like my Nissan Leaf over here, which is also a base model, and I still plan on doing a one year review in the month of July. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell notification down below so that you're notified as soon as a new video is uploaded. But for now, I'm going to cover all of the cool features that the Chevrolet Bolt EV has to offer and our impressions of the vehicle one month in to our ownership. And so what other better way to start off this review but to have my beautiful wife, seeing how she's the one that's behind the wheel uh, 9 out of 10 times, and she's the one that's driven this car more, um, we'll, we'll have the review through her perspective. <laughs> so yeah, honey, what do you think? You know, one month later, after driving this vehicle, what's, what's your impressions of the car? Yeah, I mean, I don't miss my rogue i'm not like oh my god i can't believe i gave up my gas powered car for an electric vehicle so um we've been able to do everything that we need to do every day with it so it's comfortable and um i definitely like the range i mean like for easter we will to go up to where we needed to go for easter which was a mile away a uh, mile away <laughs> which was an hour away and then come home and not even think about charging because of the range on this vehicle so so far I like it and it has all the bells and whistles which none of my vehicles have ever had anything fancy in them right and and again as I stated before this is a an LT model and it has all the bells and whistles that an LT model can uh, that they provide so so it's uh it, it definitely has features in here I mean the, the big thing all Bolt EVs come with the infotainment center here. So whether you get a Premier or you get an LT, you're going to get this, uh, I think it's a 10 and a half inch screen. It is huge and that is a big uh, compliment to the car to have that that uh, infotainment center right there. And it makes it nice for when you're doing the backup camera because like in your Leaf or even in my car I had before this, it was a very small screen, so even using that, it was hard to see. This is large. You can see your backup camera wonderfully. Sorry, I'm driving, so. Um, <laughs> so it makes it much easier to see what's behind you and that you're not trying to look at this little tiny screen. Um, and it does have the sensors if there's something off to your sides that you're not seeing, so it beeps at you when right. you're Right, so up. that's what the other thing I was talking about, where it's an LT model and it's uh, well-equipped. It has the... Uh, what they call the driver confidence package. It has the uh, um, all-weather package, I believe, or maybe that's what Nissan calls it, but it, it has the heated steering wheel and it has the heated seats. It also has the DC fast charging provisions, which we're going to be using in about a month from now when we take a trip, we're, we're planning on going to Virginia yeah. and, and then back. So, so yeah, in about a month from now, we're gonna take that trip and that's a, uh, I didn't quite look at the mileage, but it's it's further than Rhode Island, obviously. Like five hundred. Yeah, it's five hundred. When I took my trip to Rhode Island, that was actually only like a two hundred and forty mile trip or, or something like that, uh, one way. And then, but I did that all in one day, so I did four hundred and eighty-eight miles on my Leaf in one day. Um, granted, we're not going to actually do the whole five hundred plus mile trip in a day. We we plan on going. Uh, about halfway because you know we do have the the little one over here <laughs> yeah it's a long day it's a long day for us so we're just gonna we're, we're gonna break it up but we, we should have no problems with this vehicle and we look forward to posting that online too once we uh take that trip one of the upsides to having to stop and charge for anyone with kids is that on a long car trip you're required to stop you stop for gas you stop for gas you get out maybe two seconds and then you get back on the road here 
you're required to stop, which I know with my little one makes it nice because he gets to, to wear some energy off, stretch for a little bit, and then move on to your, on the road. So, well, it could be nagging to some people they have to wait two hours to charge their car, in this case, for the bolt. For me, I'm looking at it as a convenience because it gets us to stop and take some time and enjoy our trip. Right, and, and I actually don't even think it's going to be two hours. I think that's a uh, worst case scenario. Um, for Right, for what we're, we're doing, we will probably be more in the uh, 45 minutes to an hour and 15 or, or so, but we'll we'll post about that once we actually take the trip and we, we can show you, you know, real world experience, what it's like charging the car and, you know, time flies when you're having fun. So if we're pulling into like a mall and we plug in and we start charging, you know, 45 minutes go by and it might feel like, wow, we've... It only feels like we, we just got here, you know. So we'll we'll, we'll talk about that once we uh, do that video. Uh, you were talking about the heated steering wheel a little bit. Um, I will say we live in Maine, and to have the feature of a heated steering wheel when it is 20 or below is a wonderful feature to have because it gets really cold in the morning, um, even with gloves on. And it's nice to be able to come out and know that even if I don't have my heat at full blast because we don't want to take all that energy, um, I can throw this on for a minute or two to heat up the steering wheel and it helps at least take the chill out of it so it's not quite as bad. So I will say that it's definitely a feature that I've enjoyed. The other feature I've enjoyed is that when you auto start your car um, before you come out in the morning to help warm it up, it automatically turns your seat warmers on for you. Um, so that when you come out, not only is your car warm, but your seat is nice and warm, which again, living in Maine, you know, it's a little chilly here. So that, that is pretty cool out, that we get to come in and the minute you're sitting down, your seat warmers are already on. When you start the car, granted, they turn off and then if you want to turn them back on, you can do so. So um, that is a feature that I've found since we've had the car in the last month. Um, mornings are still cold here. Um, even some days are still cold. So it's been nice to have that feature of turning on the car ahead of time and knowing that everything will be toasty warm when we get in. So. Another feature that I found I liked um, granted, I'm not an electric car person. This is my first electric car. Um, Granted, you've had one and I have not, but I didn't drive yours a whole heck of a lot before I had this one. Um, so the panel I find gives me lots of information for someone who is not um, a pro at electric cars. You know, I'm, I very much know what I have for range and I know how to read my screen. So like right now I can tell that I have 111 miles I can go if I keep where I am. I know that if the you know the yellow bar drops going down, I know that my my range is lower because I'm not being as efficient, which is obviously what I'm doing right now. Um, I know if the green bar is going higher, then my range is further. So I find that it's a very um, it's it tells me what I need to know for a person who doesn't can't sit here and do all the math for kilowatts, and that's not me. That's and. I have other things to do with my time than try and figure that out. So um, I like that it tells me if I'm being efficient with my car or not being efficient very quickly by looking at the dash. Right. Basically, it's it brings your confidence up driving around. It's not like you don't have that worry like, oh, I'm just going to like run flat and I'm going to be on the side of the road. And it, you, you know where you stand as far as energy is concerned. And then like this screen right here, which I absolutely love, you, you can hit the energy screen and go to this right here and it'll just show you like what what your capacity is with this visual right here so i i love that that that's that's pretty cool uh, one of the other features we found that is a little bit more fun in this car is that we do have the option with our phones to use android auto um the one downside is with android auto you do have to have it plugged in using a usb cord instead of just using your bluetooth so you have to actually remember to plug it in which on my downside is i forget to do that a lot um and I'm in the car very, for very short burst, um, so it doesn't usually make a big difference. However, when you do have it plugged in, what's nice is I have a button here and I can talk to it and say, hey Google, which Ben thinks is a riot and tries talking to my car all the time. <laughs> um, and he actually says, hey Google. Um, and you can talk to it as if you're talking to the phone itself or using that kind of feature, you know, tell me a joke or look up an address and give me directions and use Google Maps to tell me where I'm going. So, and it puts it on this nice uh, display screen so it's nice and large and you can tell where you're going um, and you're not squinting at it. So if you find that, oh, we're gonna 
not go where we originally thought. It's very easy to, to ask it for new directions. Um, so we will certainly be using that on our trip down to Virginia and we'll have more information to come. But for the little that we've used it around town or just to test it out, I've liked it so far. Like I said, other than the fact that I keep forgetting to plug the phone in, um, just because I'm and that's And that's just for the Android Auto. The Bluetooth is automatic. It, it picks up and even if you forgot to plug it in, uh, you would still get your phone calls. Your phone calls and stuff would come through. So it's not like the phone wouldn't work. It's just if all of a sudden you decided you wanted to plug in a destination, unless it's plugged in, you wouldn't be able to do that until you pull over and plug in your phone or have your passenger like me, which, you know what, I think I'll plug that in right now so we can get a visual of what the Android Auto looks like on, on the display here. So I just plugged in her phone right here and it's actually initializing automatically, which is cool. So give it a second and you'll see the uh, Android Auto pop up here. There we go. So, uh, and it, it already says that we are 11 minutes away from home because we've just been driving around here. So. Well, it also saves your home address, which yeah. is nice. So the first time I ever told it to go home thinking it knew what my address was, it said it didn't have it and asked me what my address was and now it saves it. So all I have to do in this case is it automatically brings it up or I can say directions to home if I hit the button um, and it will take me home so that's nice that it saves it I don't have to keep telling it my address over so in order since I'm driving and you don't want to be touching buttons on your screen which is you can do it that way but I you know kind of like keeping my eyes on the road so there is a button here on my driving on my steering wheel I can't talk here all of a sudden um, that if I push the button and then talk to the car, um, it will hopefully give us what we want. We'll see if it, sometimes it, you know, like any apps, it doesn't always do what you want when it's the first time, so let's give it a try and see if it will listen to us. So, what I forgot is that you actually have to hold the button and not let go of it in order for this to work. So, <laughs> tell how often I don't do this. So, let's try this again. Directions, Hannaford, Augusta, Maine. Results for Hannaford, Augusta, Maine. There you go. That's cool. Yep. So then it shows you your results, and then you just have to click. And unfortunately, in this one, you do have to click your screen. So I would just suggest you not do it while you're driving if you can. But if you have a passenger like me, then I could just. Which one? Yep. There's a waterfall bend. Okay, so once you have your directions in, it like it, I like it because it's on the screen, it's nice and easy to view. She's quick to recalculate if you miss a turn and tell you where to go next. Um, unlike past GPS's where they seem to take forever um, to recalculate some time, this one I find is really quick. Um, we were even up and, and going towards Farmington recently and she didn't like where we were trying to go which was our normal route and even though there was low cell signals she still really quickly recalculated and, and chose a different route for us or where she at least thought she wanted us to go so I like the GPS because it's one something we're familiar with so we use it a lot and it makes it easy so as you can see now I'm starting to be more efficient of course I'm in more stop and go traffic than I was before so the green bar has started to rise above the 112 so it tells me that I can now start going a little bit further than the 112 if I continue to drive the way I'm driving now so so one of the things that I like is that it's easier for him to get in and out of his seat um, it's a flat floor in the back without the hump so it makes it so he's not stumping stumbling over it and tripping usually um and it's just nice and flat and it makes it easier for him sorry he's running off <laughs> it's all very good for me. so the trunk so far we haven't used a ton um we've done a groceries and that's pretty much it and so far i find that it works our true test will be when we take our vacation here in a month to see how it fits everything that we're bringing considering we are bringing a stroller plus suitcases and everything else you would need for vacation so that will make this a little more interesting to see how it works but for what we use in our life so far this works perfectly fine and i can reach it and close it even though i'm short so so now that you've heard from my wife and the features that she likes about the vehicle 
What about some of the other techie features that this car has to offer? Other than the massive battery, which gives you the range that my wife particularly likes, what are some of the other uh, features that this vehicle has to offer? One feature that I particularly like about the Bolt EV is the layout of the informational gauge clusters. I love having the digital speedometer front and center, and the size of it is absolutely wonderful. To the right, you can see the power consumption and the reach end gauges. This is particularly useful when driving in L mode, as I love being able to see how much energy is being put back into the battery when coming to a stop or going down a large hill. To the left is something similar that many Nissan LEAF owners will recognize. This is Chevy's version of the Gasometer. But what I like about this version is that it gives you three different estimates based on your driving at a single glance. As my wife stated earlier, this is particularly useful for someone who may be new to electric vehicles, and even for those veterans of EVs, it's nice to have and comes off as a more user-friendly interface. On top of all of that, the entire interface is customizable as well. With a few clicks of the directional arrows on the steering wheel, you can select different things to be shown underneath the speedometer. Would you like to display your radio stations instead of the tire pressure or tripometer? With just a few clicks, you can change up the display to your liking. And then you've got the center console display, or the infotainment center. And this, this is great. This is completely customizable. You can put whatever information you want to be seen here at all times. And one of the things that I like is the energy menu, and it will tell you a whole bunch of information about the batteries, their state of charge, uh, graphics to show you how much juice is still in the batteries. Um, what, some of the things that I really like, like with the charging, you can set the amperage. If, if you're on a level one, which we're not, we, we are on a level two in our garage, that's what we have hooked up, but if you're just charging off of a standard uh, 120 volt electrical outlet, you can actually change the uh, amperage so that you don't trip a breaker by uh, dropping it down to 8 amps versus 12. So that, that's pretty cool. And here's another cool feature that I like, and at least with my car, because of the software version that I'm on, and if I, and I'm just going to show you the techies out there, that if uh, I go to settings, and I go down to, oh, let's see here, software information, and I go to software update, over the air, right now, it says that I'm up to date. It says that I am on version 14.1.0. Now, I know there's been some other versions that have come out, and it's addressed a few things, but nothing major. Uh, one of the things was the Android Auto is now full screen, going from here to here. But if you saw earlier, there was like a slight black bar that went down either side when the uh, GPS was running. And we're fine with that. We would love to get it full screen, but we found out that if we do that, we would lose uh, playback of MP4 files. And I don't know why that is, and I've been trying to talk to, Chev to, to Chevy about what's going on there, and I haven't got a straight answer. So right now, I'm just going to stay on version 14.1.0. If you take mm -hmm. a uh, USB flash drive that is formatted in the FAT32 file format, I have some MP4s that are loaded up on this flash drive, and you'll see here in a moment, right here, I can click on the movie tab, and I can click on my disc, and I've got movies on here, so I can click on any one of these movies here, and watch a video in the car, and this is going to be particularly helpful, especially on our trip that we take, because if we do have to sit at a fast charger, we can, uh, with with uh, Ben <laughs> with us, we can watch a movie here right on the uh, screen. And I think that's awesome. I don't know why they've taken that away, if it was deliberate or if it was accidental. And I've been trying to talk to Chevy about that. Like, why, why is this not a capability anymore? I'm just not willing to risk going to the dealership, upgrading to the latest firmware version, and then losing this functionality. So it is something cool about the car, and I absolutely love it. But Again, from what I've heard is that functionality is lost if you go beyond version 14.1.0. So, anyways, another cool feature of the car, and I hope that that is uh, still a feature that's available in the latest software update in the future. 
and that's pretty much it. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. For all of you who have already clicked on that subscribe button, thank you so much. You are really helping me to get the word out about electric vehicles, and your free subscription to my channel helps me put out more and more of these videos for all of you to enjoy. So again, thank you so much for supporting me in this channel. Until next time, I'm Bill Hensley, and thanks for watching.